Hi, and welcome to this short video abstract summarizing our recent study published in Brain Communication. This work discusses the long-term neuropsychological effects following a SARS-CoV-2 infection along with underlying changes in functional connectivity. A particular pattern of altered consciousness of symptoms has been observed in the form of anosognosia for memory dysfunction. Let us see an example of this type of patient through a simulated medical interview. Vous m'avez dit que vous étiez hospitalisé. J'ai besoin de savoir, euh, voilà, quand vous êtes tombé malade, comment ça s'est passé pour vous et qu'est-ce qui a précipité votre hospitalisation Ah, c'était... Oui, j'ai eu quelques jours d'hospitalisation. C'était une... une expérience assez intéressante pour, pour moi. Ouais. Ce qui était... Comment ça s'est passé Vous voulez savoir exactement In the acute phase, the patient remembers the hospitalization as an interesting experience. It appears he struggles to remember how it happened and seems to lack attention. Let's see about his hospitalization. Elle est arrivée dans, dans le salon et elle m'a dit il faut partir, il faut, faut aller à l'hôpital. Et pourquoi elle, euh, elle disait que j'étais bleu. The patient stated that he was severely coughing clearly lacking oxygen and that his wife almost had to force him to the hospital. Donc on est 6 à 9 mois après votre infection, comment vous vous sentez Très bien, très bien. J'ai j'ai repris mon travail, je vous dis. OK, oui. J'ai repris mes activités euh, professionnelles et Et puis vous remarquez pas de différence entre avant l'infection et aujourd'hui. Vous êtes le même. Mm, moi ça va, vraiment. Je suis okay. euh... 6 to 9 months after the infection. The patient is feeling good and even went back to work. La mémoire, la concentration, est-ce que vous, à ce niveau-là, vous, vous remarquez des, des différences entre avant l'infection et après l'infection Et aujourd'hui, en fait à, à quel niveau Au niveau de ce qu'on appelle les fonctions supérieures, donc de la mémoire, la concentration. Est-ce que vous remarquez des différences entre avant l'infection et aujourd'hui Non, non, ça va, ça va très bien. Va. Je, suis, je suis concentré. When asking about his cognitive abilities, he confirms that he feels concentrated and that everything is all right. Nevertheless, it appears that he has difficulties to focus and remember things. Similar to the previous example, we observe the contrast between the objective measure of cognitive abilities and the self-reported perception of cognition. Three types of behavior could be noticed. The anosognosic patients with few complaints but poor cognitive performances, Coherent behavior when patients either had poor performances but were aware of their reduced abilities, or had good performances with low to no complaints. A final pattern illustrated an overinterpretation of the symptoms, where patients with a lot of complaints had good performances on the neuropsychological tasks. To observe that, patients that have been tested positive for COVID-19 either by a PCR or by serology were interviewed to meet various inclusion criteria. 102 patients were divided into three groups based on the severity of the disease in the acute phase. Then patients were invited at the University Hospital of Geneva for a battery of tests, including self-reported questionnaires, olfaction tests, neurological and neuropsychological evaluation. Patients were then considered as anosognosic or nosognosic. Finally, a subset of 49 patients agreed to undergo MRI scans. Analysis of prevalence demonstrated no significant difference between the groups based on severity, but higher proportion of patients with anosognosia in the severe and moderate groups. When looking at the behavioral data, anosognosic patients demonstrated reduced episodic memory and reduced self-awareness of their olfactory dysfunction. They reported fewer psychiatric and respiratory symptoms, along with less fatigue and a higher quality of life. The neuroimaging data showed no structural damage, but analysis of functional connectivity in anosognosic patients revealed patterns of overall hypoconnectivity, including the default mode, somatosensory, and frontal attentional networks. To conclude, anosognosia appears as a marker of neuropsychological post-COVID syndrome, with significant patterns of hypoconnectivity pointing to a potential neurological impact of the infection. Taken all together, our results suggest the importance of further investigating patients without complaints in post-COVID syndrome. Thank you for watching, and if you wish for more information, please have a look at the full report on the Brain Communication Journal. <laughs>